Yo, what's up, homies? It's me, Captain Planet. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit uh, tonight about mangroves and climate change. People are like, what do those have in common? Well, it's kind of wild because here in Florida, um, the mangroves are working their way north. And it's a symbol of climate change. You know, it's, it's, it's proof of climate change. Because in the past, mangroves weren't able to go further north like they're currently doing because there would be freezes that would keep that from happening. But we're getting fewer and fewer and fewer freezes um, far down south to where now our salt marshes, like let's say up by New Samara Beach area to, to over north of the Nature Coast, where our salt marshes take over, well now mangrove forests are starting to take over the salt marshes. So, is that a good thing or is it a bad thing? Well, it's just a thing, it's nature, right? But I like to say that it's actually a good thing because think about it like this, guys. Nature is so smart that she's actually setting up a self-defense, like an insurance policy for herself. Um, because with climate change, we know that we get um, worse hurricanes and storms, right? Um, well, mangroves are really, really awesome at settling down the impacts of waves. So when we have a big waves coming from hurricanes, when it gets into those mangroves, it lessens the impacts of the waves by about 90%, which is pretty darn good. Um, sure beats a seawall. Um, not only that though, guys, mangrove forests actually sequester more carbon um, per cubic square foot than what salt marshes sequester. You know, so you could also think of this as almost like Earth's defense to also sequester more and more carbon as she's allowed to do. You know, now some of these things are, uh, these instances are becoming a big deal because in the state of Florida, you cannot cut a mangrove tree, right? You have to have select arborists that have been trained specifically for mangroves to even just be able to trim them even so much as cut the tip off of a mangrove. Well, in places um, further up north in Florida than where I live, people aren't really knowing the laws. And, and in their eyes, they've had a beautiful water view for 20 years of the salt marsh, and now these mangroves are coming up to block their view. You know, so the first thought that a person has, I'm gonna go cut this plant down. Well, people don't realize that they're mangrove trees and they're 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 protected by the state you know so we're having to do a little bit more education in areas further north to tell people why these are actually coming and that this is a good thing you know sure it might block your view a little bit but maybe we should just alter our perspective on what a good view is is a good view uh, a 25 foot wave barreling into our house or is a good view a, a three foot wave <laughs> barreling on through the mangroves you know so I think that this is pretty cool watching the mangrove forest further and further move north you know I can't remember the specific park that I was at but I was reading this sign it was up kind of north of New Samara Beach on the east coast and I'm reading this sign it's talking about your view of the salt marsh. And I look up and the view was straight up 100%, like, well, not 100, but 95% mangrove forest, not salt marsh. You know, so nature had come in and changed what they had made a sign about just a decade prior. You know, so it's pretty cool to witness as a biologist, you know, watching nature put in an insurance policy for herself as far as you know, hey, I'm going to add more mangroves, you know, sure, this isn't nature consciously thinking, this is just how evolution works, since freezes aren't stopping the mangroves from going north and spreading, they're able to spread further north. But at that same point, it's pretty awesome how this unconscious entity that we call Earth, I put in that in quotations marks because I'm a scientist, but yet I really don't believe that. I, I think that the Earth is very conscious conscious um, but regardless I think it's incredible even when people want to say that it's not conscious 
that it's just magically balancing in this perfect symbiosis in this perfect circle and the only thing offset in that perfect circle is us human beings you know we're the only species on earth that can't seem for the life of us to figure out how to live with the earth instead of against it you know so think about it the next time you guys are in a mangrove forest how these trees represent what I call blue carbon and an ability to transfer the carbon cycle and keep it at bay for a long time you know mangrove forests grow very fast and because of that muck and what they grow in they're able to hold and sequester more carbon than uh, your typical forests like such as the amazon and things like that these water forests are actually able to do more work as far as, as, far as carbon sequestration and i for one think that that's pretty cool you know, believe it or not, at one point in time, um, seagrass in Florida, um, carbon, like, like filtered as much carbon as about as the Amazon rainforest itself, just our seagrass alone. You know, so not only is it important to, to have mangrove ecology and coral reef ecology, conservation, um, seagrass conservation, the mangrove conservation, not only is that good for our wildlife, but it's literally good for the planet as a whole, you know? And if more people got involved and saw it that way, instead of allowing Florida to just mess it up, like it just owns this stuff outright, it really doesn't. You know, the Everglades belongs to the world. The third largest reef on the planet, like that belongs to the world. It's not just Florida's to take and do what they want with. You know, so maybe if the world started getting behind us and saying, hey, you know, we want to go eco. We want this stuff to work, right? Um, maybe our next lesson, I'll talk to you guys about what I call the, the stool of ecology for Florida. I set it up like it's a three-legged stool as far as South Florida. You have the Everglades as one leg, um, or not the Everglades, but the actual seat you sit on is the Everglades. You have the coral reefs as one leg. You have uh, the mangroves as one leg, and you have the seagrass as one leg, you know, and, and how the Everglades is like the stool that sits on it, you know. But when it comes to mangroves, especially in lower Florida, like when we're talking about the Keys, um, the Florida Keys, over 40% of wildlife relies on mangrove ecosystems, especially our fisheries, guys. A lot of people don't realize, but the parrotfish, this guy, and the, and the snappers that you see out on the reef, those guys are actually born and raised in the mangroves where they're more protected by all those different prop roots. You know, these, these roots of the mangroves that go into the water like this and, and act as protection to where sharks and bigger fish can't just get in there and eat you. You know, so not only are they important for nature, they're important for us. You know, so I always laugh and say if trees had Wi-Fi signal, we'd be saving the world and getting good signal. <laughs> but don't forget, they do provide oxygen. So don't forget to breathe, y'all. Peace.